design, why does it matter? Look at our world. The entire world has been designed. Every day we touch about five or 600 objects. Automobiles, street signs, mobile phones, running shoes, this little camera. In order for any object to be really, really beautiful, it also has to work. Good design can make you have a more beautiful life, a more experiential life, a more poetic life, a better life. Welcome to Good Design. I'm Karim Rashid. I was born in Cairo, raised in Canada, and now I work in New York. It's my goal to make the world of design a democratic one. You may have seen my designs and packaging for Method, Cone Vacuum Cleaner by Dirt Devil, the Garbo Waste Basket by Umbra. Every object is worth rethinking and redesigning. Have you ever bought an object and you found it really, really beautiful and then you bring it home and you start using it and you find it doesn't really work? That's a problem. Bought a pair of shoes, famous brand, all of a sudden they're uncomfortable. There's no excuse for that in this day and age. If I pick up a digital camera, the design of it is a rectangle and the silver film camera was horizontal because the film would go through the lens. But a digital camera has no film. So really a digital camera could be any shape. It should be able to fit in your pocket. It should be unbreakable. Maybe I could throw it and it bounces. It could be a little blob in my hand. I could photograph like this with one hand. Maybe it should be even biodegradable. Even the simplest designs affect us every day. To, to, to touch all parts of the physical world is really uh, all part of the profession of industrial design because in fact all the artistic professions, all the creative professions you apply to major arts are all now being based in industry meaning that actually architecture is a form of industry. And a lot of architecture is actually a building up of, of components that are all industrially produced componentry too. So in actual fact, you could argue that if the basis is industry, and this is really what makes the economic world work, uh, then really it's all, all this is forms of industrial design. And when I uh, studied industrial design, I was, um, I thought that it's a profession to make objects and things and, and um, uh, objects of necessity, let's say, or need or desire for everyday life. And in, in fact, 160 years ago when the Industrial Revolution started, prior to that, the only people who could actually afford beautiful things were the rich. And we're only talking 200 years ago. So in actual fact, in this last 200 years, the Industrial Revolution gave us an affordance that the majority, the, the popular, could have um, better things, good things at a reasonable price or accessible things. And that was the notions of, the industri of industrialization and mechanization. And uh, so I studied, when I studied the industrial design, I was um, really keen on this idea of doing everyday objects. In fact, I think one of the first things I ever designed in undergraduate was a, a cheese board, a knife. And I, I loved work by companies like AEG and Braun and, uh, and you know, smart, what I consider really smart and, and quite beautiful product um, that was accessible. And I was brought up in a home that had these kind of products. And then when I got out of design school and started working in the profession, I realized how opposed large manufacturing was to design. In actual fact, most large manufacturing companies had three issues, three problems. One is they feared design because they felt design shrunk their market. And in many cases, it was true. You would go and work with a company, and, I, and I'll give you a prime example, is I worked, I remember working with uh, Black & Decker, and I designed a product for them, and they, it was designed, and what I mean by designed is that there's a certain sense of uh, personality, a certain sense of character, a certain sense of, of all the issues, there's a lot of issues that go on, that was imbued on the product that kind of went beyond what they felt was their status quo of, of brand. And the product I designed for them was, was really unsuccessful. So, you know, and, and that was a learning process for me. What I realized is, is that large companies felt that designers really brought to them things that didn't really have marketplace. The second problem was that they also felt that designers made expensive objects. And in fact, a lot of times when you rigorously look at a product and you decide you need to revisit it, it's, much, it's easy to make it more expensive. It's much harder to keep it where it is. The third, the third part was their, um, the, the, um, 
the, the costs involved for R&D. So their concern was immediately that a designer is going to cost a lot more money and the process would be in turn longer and in turn, um, you know, work against the way they typically work. So there was this like um, strange uh, fear by mass produced companies. And it always bothered me that I would walk into a shop, if you go to Walmart as an example, or you go to Circuit City or any of these shops, and you walk down an aisle, it's amazing how it's very hard to find just some smart, beautiful, intelligent things. And the world of commodity is at such an excrescent level, and there's so much production going on. And in actual fact, it's funny because a lot of designers feel quite guilty that they contribute to to um, uh, the demise of the earth by producing goods. And I've had a lot of friends and peers who've actually left the profession feeling that. And my, my, my feeling about that is, is that the mechanization is so well in place and consumption is only increasing yearly that whether designers are involved or not, it will make a difference. And in fact, if the designer's involved, at least then some of this commodity we have could be more beautiful and could be have, have uh, more emotion in it and could be much more human. So, um, so I, 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 if I walk down the aisle of, of, of a Walmart and I look at all the products, I can't help but think that every one of those things, anything on those shelves could be better, period. And interestingly enough, they could be better at the same cost with the same amount of tooling, with the same amount of production, with the same type of production processes, and et cetera, et cetera. The, the difficulty is to convince these large scale companies that they should in, employ and, and be proactive with design. Now, I, I'll just say quickly, how, what is design? I'm gonna define design for a moment because it's, a, a, it's, it's kind of an overused and abused word. Everything's become kind of design. I was in uh, Belgrade, uh, uh, a few days, a week ago, and there was a, a little cafe that sells shish, kebab, shish kebabs, and it said, designer shish kebab. <laughs> <laughs> so, w so what is design? Well, design is really working in the first order. What that means is, is that you are addressing a certain uh, set of issues, a certain criteria, and a certain mandate of a project. And if working in first order means that you're working directly with all those issues to make something that's relevant for this time that we live in. So design is not actually taking a style from the past. And what is style? We use the word style to denote or to categorize history, really. And we learn a lot about history, and we, we put history in a, in a, in a kind of lineation of, of, under, um, of understanding it by calling it certain styles. So really what happens is once a movement, whether it be a micro movement or a macro, really doesn't matter, has taken place, then we give it the name a certain style. So if I design and I design and I take from one of those styles and apply it, I'm not really designing because I'm not really working in the contemporary context. I'm actually borrowing from history and overlaying it onto a project that I'm doing. So a, a quick example would be if, you know, if, if somebody said to me, oh, well, what are you working on right now? And I said, oh, I'm designing a, a Wittengale-like chair. Well, Wittengale-like means that I'm actually taking the style of Wittengale and applying it to a chair. So I'm actually not working in first order. I'm kind of working in a second or uh, even a third order. So design is really then about shaping a contemporary world. So if we want to talk about the word design, then we're talking about contemporaneity, really. And design is about dealing with contemporary issues. In other words, if we make design something today, and you bury it in the ground, and you come back in the year 3500, and you bring it out of the ground, and you look at it, and you say, you know, does this tell us about our civility, about our culture, about our religion? Does this tell us about how we lived, what social life was like, everything, through this object? Does it tell us about 2004, or does it tell us about 1750, or 1850, or onward, onward? So in other words, our products that we do should reflect and be part of this day and age in which we live. 